good afternoon and welcome to Today on Bay TV. I'm Liz Cairns and this is Rachel Hopkins. Today we are joined first on the sofa by the Assembly Member for Swansea East, Mike Hedges, and leading journalist Robin Llewellyn-Jones. Let's start with On This Day. Um, firstly, we're going to start with, sadly, in 1980, uh, the death of Peter Sellers, British comedian and actor. He rose to fame on the BBC radio comedy series The Goon Show. Do either of you remember? Or, or you, Rachel, as well, do you remember it? I'm afraid, I, I rarely say this, but I'm too young. <laughs> and I'm definitely too young. But it, I mean, I know his name, yeah. and yeah. there are links out there with Prince Charles was yes. a, Prince Charles was an avid fan. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll see. Well, shall we watch a video to remind ourselves? Yeah. <laughs> Idiot. There is a time and a place for everything, Kato. And this is it. No! I think his facial expressions are yeah. just classic, aren't they? <laughs> Absolutely, and what a what an action-packed uh, mm. film. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Pink Panther, was it? Um, it was the... Mm, oh, so the Inspector Clouseau films. Yeah, yes. The Pink Panther. Yeah, it was Pink the Pink Panther. Panther. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that's right. He's got a huge cult following, hasn't yeah. he? You know, I definitely. think people who loved him absolutely loved yeah. him. Yeah, definitely. Including Prince Charles. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> Royal approval. <laughs> well, I don't know about uh, the Pink Panther, but I mean, certainly the Goon Show was right. a favourite of Charles's. Oh. Of course, that couldn't relate. They did try to relate it mm. to mm. television. Mm. But it never worked. It was one of these things that belonged solely to radio. Right. And yeah. uh, that wonderful cast of Harry Seacombe, Spike Milligan and Peter Sellers. Yeah. All top names that we all recognise, definitely. And Michael Benteen? Well, he was the one of the... He was the first. He was the original. Mm -hmm. And then he dropped out and I think... I forget who it was. Joined, uh, joined didn't they? Yeah. Well, in 1969, Apollo 11 returns to Earth, and Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, and he returned from the moon. So you must remember. Yes, of course. Yes. Yeah. I remember Michael Collins, <coughs> the man who stayed, stayed on the craft all the time, the one who's always forgotten. Mm. Big, big times in history, yeah. aren't they? Well, we've got a video. Should we have a look at it? Yeah. President Richard Nixon, who had talked with the astronauts by telephone while they were on the moon, was waiting aboard the recovery carrier to welcome the returning voyagers. The president later expressed the nation's response to this historic mission. Some way, when those two Americans stepped on the moon, the people of this world were brought closer together. That it is that spirit, the spirit of Apollo, that America can now help to bring to our relations with other nations. Imagine to have been part of that. It would have been amazing. Unbelievable. And the training that they must have gone through and Definitely. how life-changing. I yeah. can't even comprehend. And the courage, because uh, yes. they didn't know they were going to be able to come get, be, get it right to come back. And yeah. uh, they were using computers with the capacity of the average home computer now to do all the calculations for sending them to the moon and bringing them back. Yeah, Landing there was difficult enough, but actually getting it all right to come back into the Earth's atmosphere and land, uh, that must have been terrifying because mm. uh, one slight mistake and uh, they'd have burnt up all the way down. Yeah, definitely. Imagine the families as well yeah. waiting at home. Mm. Um, in... 1936, Britain's famous speaking clock celebrates its 81st birthday. Um, the General Post Office introduced Tim 
they named him Tim because you'd have to, when you subscribe to the service, you'd have to dial the first three letters of the word time. As dials at the time included letters as well as numbers to aid automatic calls, dialing TIM led to his common name, Tim. And that service then went national six years later. Should we actually have a little clip of the video? At the third stroke, it will be one, 59 and 10 seconds. Meet Tim, the talking clock. The service which day and night saves you going out to find a policeman when you want to know the time. Here at the Hoburn Telephone Exchange, the clock which cost the post office nearly £100,000 to build has answered Londoners' voiceless queries 400 million times since it started work 17 years ago. Well, our famous voice was Ethel Kane. And I, re I remember phoning um, mm. speaking clock. Yeah. But I, I was fascinated by yeah. it. Loved ringing it up. Parents weren't amused when the phone bell came through, but... No, I can yeah. imagine, actually. <laughs> Being well brought up, you said thank you at the end of it. Absolutely. <laughs> just how times have changed, and everybody's got oh, the time gosh. on their mobile phone mm. that to carry around with them at all times. Mm. Yes, definitely. Or the, we've got the watches now with the mobile phones built yeah. into them. Everything has moved forward. It's just looking at the, yeah. the actual phone when you... Dial in like that as well. It's everything has moved forward. I actually it? dialed like that. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot. It took a lot longer than dialing, but just pressing numbers. <laughs> Definitely. But I think we used to remember telephone numbers because we dialed yeah. that way. Whereas these that's days we don't even point. know mm. our own number, do we? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's true actually. Because as mm. you memorise it as yeah. you're going yeah. through, yeah. I still remember my first telephone number because mm. that's how I, yeah. you know, used it. So. Mm. Mm. Right, moving on. In 1935, the world's first children's railway opens in Tbilisi, USSR. And also in 1908, 56 runners began the London Marathon from Windsor Castle as part of the London Olympic Games. Did that was 1908. Yes, 1908, yeah. It's Amazing to think, and now when we look at the Olympic Games now, it was just having long past and that, how things have moved forward, even down to the, the countries, everybody really, yes. and the amount of different sports yeah. that's entailed in the Olympic Games now, because back then, I'm not sure, how, they would have been limited to the amount of games they would have had. But they had different sports then, you had the mm. standing high jump and tug of war and the whole range of strange events which uh, no longer exist. Yeah, that's Standing so long jump. Oh, hmm. You just literally have to stand in one place. And jump. Oh, good grief. <laughs> a bit like we'll children do Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll see how far we can Yeah, jump. if we're not in late, yeah, the rest <laughs> of the week is because we've fallen over and broken a bone. But yeah. there we go, we'll now, try it. Now the Olympic Games, it seems, has become so expensive that mm. countries are just not able to bid for them anymore. Yeah, that's true. That's a shame. Yeah, well, they're about £100 billion to um, stage. Good wow. grief. A lot of the stadiums aren't of any use afterwards. No. That, yeah, that's true, actually. Oh, you have to try and find a football team to take it over, yeah. as they did in London. Yeah. But the famous stadium in China is, become, is becoming devil because there's no, there's no use for it. Mm. That's great. And you would think, like you said, how much money has gone into yeah. that. Yeah. And probably would have been government, public yeah. money yeah. that could have been used yeah. for something else then later mm. on. You'd think that they'd when they are building it, that they'd think of usage later on and sustainability then. Mm. But um, like you said, if they just left, then desolate. Well, I mean, London's been very fortunate that mm. the football team has taken over the stadium. Yeah. Uh, without that, it would, it would just been left. I mean, it's only football generates the level, type of crowds which are equivalent to an Olympic game crowd. Right. In 1983, quickly, sorry, 1883, uh, Captain Matthew Webb, the first man to swim the English Channel, uh, in 1875, sadly drowned, drowned whilst attempted to swim the rapids at Niagara Falls. Now, I'm assuming there would be a big difference with regards to current mm. and that from swimming the English Channel to then obviously the Niagara Falls, bless him. Mm. But I think even the English Channel comes with its well, dangers. Yes. You, can't, yeah. you can't predict everything. Mm. Um, even the temperature, you know, yeah. that drops. Yeah. Um, and it's also very busy, busy with shipping lanes. Yes. Mm. What's going across and also coming through it. Yeah. Mm. And that creates a lot of tide yeah, yeah, control, you know. Yeah. yeah, that's true. We have a quick vid we haven't actually got time now for the video, but um, thank you both. Thank you. And 
next up, we'll be reviewing the papers. There's plenty of stories that we'll all be covering and everything, and you'll both be joining us as well. I see you after to the that. break. Definitely. <laughs> we'll see you after the break.
Welcome back. I'm Rachel Hopkins and this is Liz Kens. Mike Hedges, Assembly Member for Swansea East and our very own Robert Llewellyn Jones are joining us here today. Well, should we have a look at the papers? Yeah. I'm going to begin today with the Daily Mail. Uh, Corbyn student debt humiliation. Metro, we didn't say we'd write off student debts. It's been all over the weekend with regards to Corbyn retracting. He's now doing a U-turn and apparently there is no money tree. But be first, before we discuss it, let's hear what Corbyn actually had to say. Text of an interview with the uh, New Musical Express and uh, an uh, interview I also did with The Independent in which I pointed out there was a massive overhanging debt that many people dealt with. I recognised it was a huge burden. I did not make a commitment we would write it off because I couldn't at that stage. I pointed out we'd written the manifesto in a short space of time because it, mm. it was a surprise election, but that we would look at ways of reducing that debt burden, recognising quite a lot of it is never going to be collected anyway, and try and reduce that so level of burden. But the point we absolutely made was that we would abolish the student debt from the time we were elected and had we, had, were we now in government, we'd be taking measures to ensure that the 2017-18 students did not pay fees or we would reimburse okay. them if we that, couldn't that, get the legislation through time. That bit I completely time. understand. And we were completely clear it, about but that. But if you were a young voter and you heard those words, I will deal with it, you might have thought, Jeremy Corbyn is going to relieve me of my debt, but you won't. What I said was, we would deal with it by trying to reduce the burden of it. We never so said, it, we never said said we would completely abolish it because we were okay. unaware of the size at that time. John McDonnell is established or has established a working okay. party to look at this policy and we will be making a statement on it in the near future which will set out what our plans are for the future. Mike Hedges, do you agree with what Jeremy Corbyn said? I, I do. I, I'm old enough to remember going to university not only uh, not having any student fees but having a grant in a scholarship as well. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, fundamentally wrong that young people are being burdened with so much debt at a relatively young age and of course if your parents are able to pay it then it's not a problem but most of my constituents uh, and certainly I when I was there that age would not have been able to do so. Uh, ending it for new students he's committed to it, it's, it's going to be a problem, it's going to be a problem for governments because after 30 years, they're going to start writing it off. And it's huge amounts of debt which haven't even started to be paid yet from 30 years ago, or 20, 20 years ago. It's a serious problem. It's a huge, huge error of judgment bringing it in. Certainly moving it up to 9,000 was even, even worse. And uh, I think that at some stage, it's going to have to be dealt with because students just aren't able to pay, including those who emigrated to Australia, New Zealand, especially doctors who avoid having to pay any. Do you think, though, that Jeremy Corbyn's statements prior to the election were misconstrued, or do you think he is actually making a U-turn? I think we were misconstrued. I think that uh, he, that he, I think he agree, would agree entirely with me that students should not be paying fees. We went to Prime Ministers as diverse as Ted Heath, Margaret Thatcher and Alec Douglas Hume, who had free tuition fees tuition for, stu for students' university. Why it was changed... Uh, I don't know, it was an error, and actually trebling them is a huge error. Robert Swindon. Well, I think we were privileged, um, uh, you and I, to, to have uh, an education at a time when uh, you didn't have to pay. There was a means test at the time uh, which determined how much money you had as a grant, depending upon your parents' circumstances. But having said that, your tuition fees and um, anything else that went with it, like a scholarship, all these things were for, your, for, your, for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we never had to worry about, uh, never had to worry about tuition fees. And I was fortunate enough to be what I call a child of Macmillan. Uh, and uh, when he was pre uh, prime minister and uh, uh, Butler, I think, was the minister of education then, and uh, we were we were very we were very fortunate. Do you agree with what some of the papers are stating that if he hadn't made this statement about the fees, um, so many young, well, the younger generation would actually have come out and voted? 
Well, yeah. what do you think? You're a politician. I, I, I think I think young people were enthused by Jeremy Corbyn, actually starting to say things that they believed in. I, I, I mean, young people, I don't know how, how people are managing. I mean, you know, people are leaving university with £50,000 worth of debt. Mm. But it's, it, it must create huge problems for uh, getting a mortgage later in life. And the, the one big problem, of course, is that... If the only way to avoid it is to is to emigrate, and that that really is not a good strategy for a country that your brightest emigrate because they then can't take it off you. Mm. No, exactly. Especially these days, we're trying to keep mm. everybody yes. here. Yeah. Yeah. It's the worst um, scenario. Moving on, the Daily Mail: Harry and Wills hadn't seen Diana for a month before her death. And Daily Mirror: How Diana's boys helped her in her divorce. And Daily Express. <laughs> Diana portrait of a devoted mother with baby Harry that was taken by Prince William. We have a video um, which we'd like to show firstly. How do you keep her memory alive for your children? I think constantly talking about Granny Diana. <laughs> um, so we've got more photos up around the house now of her and we talk about her a bit and stuff, and it's it's hard because obviously Catherine didn't know her, so it, she cannot really provide that that level of, of detail. So I I do regularly putting George or Charlotte to bed, talk about her, and just try and remind her that um, there are two grandmothers. There were two grandmothers in in their lives, and so it's important that they they know who she was and and that she existed. I I just can't think how what they are feeling, to be honest with you, and to be in the public eye as well, constantly trying to grieve. And then when it comes out that they hadn't even seen um, their mother a month prior, and that was due to the divorce, obviously they were going back and forth between parents and that. So they were already going through all that. I would have thought that was the case. Mm. Uh, I only say going back and forth. Mm. Uh, you can't equate, I don't think, royal, mm. uh, royal circumstances and a royal divorce yeah. uh, in the same way as you can equate a normal, a normal shall we say, uh, family breakup and um, of course the palace has rules of its own and uh, it doesn't necessarily follow I can't remember the exact exactly but I don't even think that Diana may not have had custody you know it was mm. because of the circumstances yeah. of, 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 of their royal background I, I, I don't disagree with the word you've said but let's forget that but them being royal these were young boys who lost their mother mm. I think that 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 really what what it comes comes down to. I mean, my yeah. mother died when I was in my fifties. That was devastating. Mm -hmm. These were young boys, and they they, they mother, their mother died, and uh, they, they everything happened in the full glare of publicity as well. There was one the opportunity, opportunity to grieve that uh, those of us uh, who are not royals have, and the circumstances yeah. as well. Yes, yeah, you know, were, were well unusual to mm -hmm. say the least, weren't yeah. they? and uh, all the things that have happened since the conspiracy yeah. theories. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it's, it's something that's, Diana is, we've got to face up to the fact that she is never going to go away. No. She was she 36 when she died? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, she was young, she had young children, yeah. and she, in most people's views, had a whole, whole life in front of her, and it was yeah. uh, tragically cut short. Yeah. But it's tragic that they're constantly being mm. reminded of the mm. fact mm. that they're never going to really be able to put it to bed. As you say, mm. it doesn't matter who you are, when you lose a parent, mm. it's devastating. Mm. And they must relive it time and time again. Mm. And to see it mm. in the papers, in yeah, the glare. This is it, oh, exactly. Can't but, comprehend. And, yeah. mm. The fact that they came out last year with regards to mm. suffering with mental mm. health and yeah. depression, because like you said, they haven't been allowed to grieve mm. like no, not normal children, but no everyday children mm. are allowed to do that. They had to, like we were speaking before, they had to stand behind mm. their own mother's coffin. As it, that well, was not to, normal. They had to, first of all, stand behind what the royal protocol was. Mm. Yeah. And if you remember, it was uh, the Queen was very reluctant. It, uh, if we are to believe the film, it was Prime Minister Blair who yeah. uh, eventually brought her round to lowering the flag at Buckingham mm -hmm. Palace. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think it was 
uh, the people. I mean, I think that Prime Minister Blair was a very good populist, but it was the view of the people as something should 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 be done. Yeah. She was seen very much as the people's princess, and uh, mm. the, the the huge pressure of do, of do, of doing that. Uh, that that uh, one thing you can see about the British royal family, they're very good at making decisions under pressure, which will get, show them in the best light. Mm. I think our opinions of them have changed for the better mm. um, over the last few years. And I think that's down to um, William and Harry, mm. a lot of it anyway. Mm. They're definitely living in their mother's footsteps, though, aren't they? Yeah. they they've got mm. the same heart. You can see yeah. that, the yeah. things, they views are definitely mm. the same with the charities yeah. and that mm. as well. Mm. Well, perhaps it's because we are... We are moving more to the European. I am going to have to stop you now, sorry. But thank you so much for both your views and for joining us. And after the break, we hear from Tracy Baker from Neath, who's off to the World Transplant Games.
Welcome back to Today on Bay TV. We are joined by a very special young woman, Tracy Baker, who has been a contestant in the World Transplant Games. Tracy, I know you've had such a long, troublesome journey, really, and it's been really difficult for you since the age of five. Um, if you can tell us your story and how it's created who you are today. I was diagnosed with kidney failure at the age of five, went on to dialysis at the age of 10, and had my first kidney transplant at 11. Then I went to the Games for 10, 12 years. I represented Great Britain in Australia in 97, won numerous medals, but then I decided to go back last year due to a situation that happened in my, in my life. So I won last year in the British Games, uh, gold, three silvers and a bronze, and I was chosen in September then to represent Great Britain in Malaga, which was, I travelled over on the 24th of June. That's amazing. What, I know when you have a transplant and that they say to keep fit but to go to the extremes that you did what drove you to start training to the to the degree that you do I do love my training. I train a lot with my sister, who's my best mate, as well as my sister. And I train with other people. I go to a class in a Kimna, which really motivate me. But I've now joined um, Harriers in Neath because I need to get to the best of what I can and they will be able to give me the training I'll do. So you've achieved everything basically on your own because you didn't actually have a coach, which I just find no. is mm. amazing. No, I had classes in the Kimla, but I didn't have a coach in athletics. So I went, joined last week because my father did say, <laughs> oh, cheek, my father did say that he said you'll win goals in next year in the British Games, but I can't see it happening in the world. So I'm going to prove him wrong. <laughs> and, uh, do you know I'm sure you will? Yeah, I'm just yeah. so determined. <laughs> Um, now, you, you've got connections here as well. Yes, sir. If you can tell us what's... Well, I'm a patron of the Paul Popham Fund, which I think uh, helps sponsor you to go out yeah. to, to the World Games. Uh, and the Paul Popham Fund was created uh, in memory of uh, Paul Popham, uh, who was a very well-known local sports person, uh, played football for St Joseph's forever, and uh, was a friend of mine, and uh, he suffered from kid kidney failure. And uh, it's really, I think it really is important that uh, people realise that even if you have health problems, you could still keep fit. Yeah. I think that uh, uh, t t something I go, I go on about a lot is we do have some personal responsibility for our health. We can't just keep an expecting to go to a doctor. That it's up to us to keep ourselves fit and active, and that will help and will improve our health no end. I think some people are quite nervous about making that first step because you're absolutely right. So what would you say to people sat at home, Tracy? Maybe they've just been diagnosed because it can happen to as your proof of children, teenagers, anybody of any age. So what would be your words to them? I find there's a lot of support out there um, with Paul Popham's fun. I knew Paul. Paul put me into running my first race uh -huh. when I was 12. I was really nervous and he said, come on, he said, I'll do the leg with mm. you. So he'd run with me. I'll never forget it. Mm. And so I would uh, encourage people to go out and you don't have to go to the games and win a medal. I find promoting it and seeing what an organ transplant can do no matter what. Don't get me wrong, I want to win. Yeah. <laughs> that's that me type of, but it's from people from the age of two to the age of 80 who can do any sports they want. And the Paul Popham Fund isn't just about sport, is it? No. You just mentioned um, making friends and yeah. having a social life, which mm. I would imagine you can be... It's like yeah. a community. Mm. That's what I class it as. Yeah. And I, well, to be honest, I'm so grateful to Paul's daughter, Joanne, set, set it up. I'm so grateful for them who give me the opportunity mm. and paid for me to go out to represent yeah. my Great Britain. They do an awful lot of work uh, with, with Morrison Hospital and get, 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 getting people to talk to other people mm -hmm. about the same problems. Uh, I think that uh, one, of the, one of the problems with uh, things like kidney failure is that you probably don't know anybody who's, who's had it or very few people. And all of a sudden when it hits you, then you feel that you're the only person in the world with it. And this idea of getting people to talk to others who've had the same problems and can show, can show that there is light at the end of the tunnel. I know they also helped fund what you said with Morrison Hospital mm. for iPads and things yeah. like that because dialysis, people, I don't know if they understand or realise how long you're actually stuck to that machine. You mm. can't go anywhere. Like you said, it's, it's to have like a, a buddy or something mm. as well because I know yeah. they help with that. Yeah, yeah. that's tremendous. That yeah. Is, uh, because it really is important that you have, have support. Mm. Definitely. I'd imagine it could be quite a lonely place without this. Yes. Um, it's surprising that it's not more aware. So if anybody's watching and wants to get involved, um, what would be your advice to them? 
contact the Paul Popman Fund. Its uh, address is on on the on its website, and uh, any any support they can give, I'm sure the Paul Popman Fund would be more than grateful to receive, uh, either in time or money. And what um, what else have we got in in the future for well, the great Br the British Games are in ne next weekend, but unfortunately I'm unable to go. So I'm training for next, you know, which the British Transport Games are in Birmingham in obviously in Grand July time. So I got a year's training for that, and also I go up in age category. I go forty to forty nine. Oh, um, right. next so you'll be year. young. For yeah, so I'd be one yeah. of the youngest. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, so I'm aiming to train for that and I hope me and yeah. Joanne yeah. from the Paul Popper Fund are hoping as well to get more people yeah. involved with it yeah. and to see that this is what a trans man yeah. can do. Yeah. Even if you can just throw a ball, yeah. it's yeah. an effort that, yeah. that you make and I know we'd all support each other through it all. Because I know you said the amount of people now from Great Britain that actually attend the Worlds and that have lowered drastically yeah. with the british with the with the great britain team we used to have um, loads of us going from cardiff because that was a central obviously yeah. hospital but now there's only four of us welsh people went to the world games yeah. this year and there was only the four of us in the great britain yeah. games so we're just trying to get all the welsh people to get yeah. into just the games raise awareness and maybe some people don't even realize that no that that's something that they could aim for yeah. and do. So like you said, raising awareness I think is really important. And Absolutely. yeah, and just to let them know that these can be achieved. Mm -hmm. the, all these things can be achieved. And like you said, even if it is just from throwing a ball or just running, keep active yeah. is the main yeah. thing, definitely. Are there any things with regards to um, dietary, would you say? There's I, to be honest, I watch what I eat. I eat quite healthy all the time. Um, and I set my own little plan out for myself. So I eat healthy, but then obviously we all, I drink loads of water, but obviously I do have a cheat meal and mm -hmm. I, because we all got to, because yeah. we're human. So, but I watch my diet and I train five times a week anyway. Good. I was going to ask, mm. so that's... Um, <laughs> That, that must take up an yeah. awful lot of your time. Yeah, it does. Mm. Yeah. I love it, though. But that's why you've got medals. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm going to come home with more next time. Mm. Well, we'll be having you on here with those medals, for yes. definite. Mm. <laughs> I always remember Lee Trevino who said, the more I practice, the luckier I get. Ah, that's mm. true. Practice makes perfect, yeah. as they say. Definitely. Oh. So you're going to be training now, obviously, you're going to be go do you train outside, because I know it's in the Harriers? Yeah, I go to Neath Harriers and I also go to a, uh, um, LJ Fitness in Kimna to yeah. build, because I do five events, so I'm concentrating on the sprinting with right. the Harriers and then I'm building because I'm going to do shot put and cricket ball throw, so I need the upper body and everything Oh, like wow. Mm. So what's the other ones? Awesome. <laughs> what are the other events as well, because you said the five events? Yeah, the five, I'm doing 100 metres, 200 metres, 400 metres, and shot put on, on cricket ball throw but I don't know if I'll do javelin or long jump it depends which one I want to put in which one I'm better at realistically and do you have a preference what's, what's your favourite the yeah, yeah. Definitely. Mm. And, uh, but it's getting out of that block and mm. be in Usain Bolt if I could <laughs> <laughs> no chance you never know <laughs> determination he'll be the one just behind you <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good attitude. And it must help you mentally as well yeah. to do all this and focus on this rather than um, the fact that you've had your two transplants. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest, I'm my training comes first, I come first, mm. and my jobs and everything like that. And then, to be honest, my health is at the bottom of the list. Because I think once you get your health, it gets to yeah. you, it's the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. So You're an inspiration. Have you kept a sort of journal of it all? Yeah, so it's it's on, I'm on Facebook, so it's all right. on there. And the amount of people, you know, inspiration, go and everything, which is quite Aww. rewarding because I do the games for myself because mm -hmm. I like to compete. But to promote organ donation for what the transplant mm -hmm. can do, I think is amazing. Yeah, yeah I can mm -hmm. imagine so many people do actually look up to you yeah. for, for definite. Thank you. And what is your Facebook page for anybody to look on? No, it's, it's just, just your name? name. It's just yeah. your names, yeah. is it? Mm -hmm. Right, okay, brilliant. So if anybody does want to know any more information, mm -hmm. could they just contact yeah. you? Yeah. That would be brilliant. Thank you so much. Obviously, you've got yeah. only a small amount of time, though, outside of your training to get back to everybody, so yeah. I'll give her a bit of time. Yeah, I will get back to you, to be honest. Yes, yeah. I'm a type person So how did you start in the first place with um, the foundation and that? Well, the reason most people start and think they were asked. Uh, ah, right. <laughs> but uh, I, I, say I knew Paul very mm. well uh, from his days of uh, both playing for and running St. Jo Joseph's Football Club uh, uh, in, in Swansea. Uh, so I was asked to join. I was very pleased to have the opportunity to become a patron. I think it's a wonderful charity. It's one I'm very supportive of. And uh, I would hope more, more of your viewers will uh, become involved. And quickly, if they want, anybody wanted to contact again, what details would they need? 
Just go into the, just type in, into the internet, Paul Popham Fund, it'll come up. Oh, lovely. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for inviting me. And good luck. And all the best. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be rooting for you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, next, the show besides that Keith Millward joins Rachel on the sofa.
Welcome back to the final part of today on Bay TV. I'm Rachel Hopkins. Now, a big welcome to our showbiz editor, Keith Millwood, and also to Amanda Murphy and Robin Haley from Musicality. Uh, so before we talk to you, uh, let's listen to Alicia Coates singing Gimme Gimme from Thoroughly Modern Millie. A simple choice, nothing more This or that, either or Marry well, social world, businessman, clever girl Or pin my future on a green glass love What kind of life am I dreaming of? I say Gimme, gimme Gimme, gimme Gimme, gimme That thing called love I want it Gimme, gimme That thing called love I need it and lows, tears and laughter Give me happy ever after Give me, give me that thing called love Give me, give me that thing called love I crave it Give me, give me that thing called love Sick and thin, rich or poor time Give me years and I'll one more time Give me, give me that thing called love Give me, give me that thing called love I'm free now Give me, give me that thing called love I see the fly dove sing sparrow Give me Cupid's famous arrow Give me, give me that thing called love I don't care if he's a nobody In my heart he'll be a somebody Somebody to love me I need it Give me that thing called love I want it Fantastic. Oh, thank you very, very much. And uh, as we were saying, we were speaking to Amanda Murphy, Murphy and Robin Haley of Musicality. And of course, you're presenting Thoroughly Modern Millie at yep. the Princess Royal Theatre uh, at the end of this week in Port Talbot. So mm, tell us all about week. it. <laughs> yeah, show week. Nerves have kicked in. Uh, <laughs> Not to Alicia, obviously. That was fantastic. Oh, thank um, you. Yes, yeah, show week this week. So we actually open on Thursday evening at the Princess Royal Theatre in Port Talbot. And we're running through till Saturday then. Ah, and uh, Robin, uh, tell us about the character because you're, you're so wonderfully <laughs> decked out there. So um, the show itself is about um, Millie Dillmount. Um, she uh, is from Kansas and she moves to New York to live the dream. She wants to become famous. She wants to make it big. She wants to marry rich and just make loads of money and become rich off of that. But then, so she wants to marry her boss. She wants to find a boss, marry him. Ah. And she bumps into my character, Jimmy Smith. And it sort of throws her plan off because they start seeing each other and she starts to sort of fall 
for yeah. Jimmy. Oh, you sweep her oh, off her feet. Yes. So of course, yeah. as you do. As you do. <laughs> <laughs> but we remember the 1967 film with mm. Julie Andrews and Mary Tyler Moore. And uh, of course, we all remember the tap dancing in the lift. In the lift uh, often yes. I get in the lift and start <laughs> tap dancing, <laughs> hoping that it works. It's all in key. <laughs> it's all in yes. it. It's all in it. Yeah, so, gosh. so the choice of Thoroughly Modern Billy, you know, um, how is it that you've come to put this production together this year? Well, that's interesting because normally we choose quite contemporary musicals but last year we did a very traditional one with Oliver um, just to show that we could do something a bit different and in a way it's, it's doing the opposite yeah. again isn't yeah. it with this because um, it was quite dowdy with Oliver and traditional so we've gone a bit more glitzy and uh, we thought we'd get some tap dancing in and give our dancers lots to do this time so uh, just something a bit different. Lots the of costumes. Yeah. Well, the costumes are great. Aren't they yeah. great? Yeah. Lots of sequins. <laughs> it's just a sample. Just yeah, a it's sample. quite a hard show so it's challenged us actually. Mm. Um, in what ways? Well we've added a concept we don't like to do things sort of quite normally. <laughs> so we've added a concept, mm -hmm. haven't we? In fact, uh, our director, Dan Phillips, originally from Swansea, but uh, he now directs in London. He came down especially for us for Thoroughly Modern Millie. And the concept that he's chosen is to set Millie within a film set. So, ah, um, yeah, so it's actually as if we're filming terrible. Millie that makes sense yeah. so it's been a bit confusing for our actors to get their heads around oh, yes. but they've got it and it's yeah it's going to be interesting Gosh, hopefully this is a good, a good take in it and of course musicality has been running for how many years now oh well we're just about to hit our 10th anniversary next year so very exciting oh my yes. gosh yes and uh, remind us of some of the shows that you've done and uh... oh my goodness well we started off with high school musical and <laughs> fame uh we've done bugsy malone west side story a chorus line um i think the last few years have been our our favourites though. We did Alice the Musical, mm -hmm. which was oh, hilarious. Yes, yes, we loved yes. doing that. Um, and then The Addams Family, mm, yes, I Adam's think, Adam. has probably been our perhaps our Not best so fun. far. Mm -hmm. we, we enjoyed that one, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. And Robin, what made you get into theatre and drama and Well I, I joined musicality when I was eight and nine years old. Oh. I think I was a I was in the junior <laughs> section when I first joined musicality and um, uh, my friend's brother, he was in it. And, he's, and I said, oh, I'd love to be in something like that, uh, just as a hobby. And that's what it was up until about four years ago when I was in year 10 going into year 11. I thought, I really want to do this as a career, so almost. But just through friends and stuff like that, and I've loved it ever since. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I love it. And I was going to say, you've probably made so many friends absolutely. when a lot yes. of teenagers have nothing much to do mm -hmm. and possibly hanging around, getting into trouble. It's Great. a fantastic hobby. They, yeah, mm. it's lovely, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yes. And Robin actually is also part of our management agency. Oh. Uh, and I've just recently done a film to commercial, didn't you, for yes. the uh, yes. Metropolitan oh. Police. So that was a big yeah. experience. Mm -hmm. So yeah. just nice to have a hand in lots of different things yeah. going on. So Because, exciting. of course, we were talking earlier and there are actually three sort of strings to your bow or bow to your strings. I can have <laughs> 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 three, three stars. Three stars. <laughs> <laughs> much easier. Uh, so tell yes, us there we are, look. So sorry to yes. show you to my chest oh, yes, here, but yes, yes, the, yes, the pink is our academy, and the green is the management agency, and the orange there is the fitness strand to the company, which we started in January. Oh, you were fantastic. saying you had a background in that as well. So That's right. It's and, interesting, yeah. You know, with fitness, people are sort of saying, oh, I don't want to do it, and this, that, and the other. But I think if you're going to go and dance, you get in fit. It's you don't like getting fit, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's all good stuff. Yeah. dance-based, so... Yes. Um, Loads of fun, yeah, yeah but yeah. getting fit at the same time, yeah. so... Right. Yes. Yes. You know, so, so do you have any uh, plans, you know, regarding uh, young people? You know, uh, it's, uh, it's obviously great for their confidence, you know, but are there any thoughts behind, you know, what you're doing with uh, the young people as well as uh, getting them to act, you know? What, what yeah, are, what I mean, it's a matter of nurturing them each individually, really, to what they want and their needs and their abilities. So there's some that want to come purely just, just for fun mm -hmm. and, and do it as a hobby, which is fantastic. And with those, then you just improve the confidence their diction, their performance and that type of thing. Just self-esteem, really. Yes. So whatever um, they do later then, on in life, it's always going to help exactly. them. Even, even, you know, if they're interviewing for... Um, you know, to be a doctor, something completely different. Yeah, well, I had some feedback, mm. actually, on somebody, that, a local employer in the area, who said they always look for people who've been to musicality because they know they'll have that much of air. And I yeah. thought that was a, just such a lovely compliment. Yeah. So I um, remember that. Yeah. What about people who are interested in doing the background? You know, they don't particularly want to be on stage like yourself, but they would be interested in coming along. Is there room yes. for them? Yes, absolutely. 
hundred percent. And there's also the, you know the technical side of of the whole thing that goes on as well. You know, we've got people who do the stage work. Well, we've got our stage manager, Jonathan, who's constantly doing stage work. He's a part of the company as well. Uh, my father sometimes gets well, involved. Well, yeah. we'd be lost <laughs> without those that help backstage. Yeah, exactly. Definitely, Thank goodness for the parents. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, we wanted to thank you, and a, but a big thank you to all our guests today for joining us on the show. And don't forget, following next on Bay TV, we have our afternoon matinee film. Today, it's the 1959 murder mystery, Sapphire, starring Yvonne Mitchell and Michael Craig.